Hello everybody, welcome to video number three in our pigeon genetic video series. This video we are going to be talking about what's probably the most common modifier and that is the spread gene. Now with the spread gene you can generally no longer see the pattern of the bird, however you can still tell what the base color is. But with spread, what spread does is it takes the tail bar and it spreads it out. It spreads the, the pigment and the, the granulars in the tail bar and it just moves it all over the pigeon. With some colors it does it better than others, but here are some examples. Now spread is an autosomal dominant gene. Autosomal just means it's not sex linked. So each bird, cock or hen, can both carry two genes for spread. They can be heterozygous spread or dominant spread. Now whether they're het or I said dominant, whether they're het or homozygous spread, you can't visually tell the difference. It's the same thing. You can only tell once you breed it. For instance, if you have a homozygous spread bird that just is a black, say so you just have a black, which is a blue spread. It could be a blue bar, a blue T pattern, blue check, and then spread on top of it. If it's homozygous and you breed it to a blue bar, all your offspring are going to be heterozygous spread. They're going to look just like the homozygous spread, but they're only going to have one dose. So if you take one of those heterozygous spreads and breed it to a blue bar, now you're only going to be getting 50% spreads and 50% will just be regular blue bars. And then the ones, the 50% that are spread are only going to be heterozygous. So let me show you some spreads now. I got all three base colors that we talked about in video one. Um, the simplest, most common spread is just on top of a black, or on top of a blue. Now, don't mind the white flights. That's just another gene added to it. But that's not a part of the spread. Now, if you see the tail bar, or the tail, there is no tail bar. The entire tail is just black, and along with the rest of the pigeon. You can't tell what pattern this bird is underneath. I don't know. Now, sometimes you can still see some pattern. With black, spread does the best job. But sometimes it doesn't cover everything perfectly. For instance, this bird here is a spread ash red. Now you can still kind of see bars there. You can see ruminants. You can tell that this bird is a bar underneath, even though it is spread. Now the thing with ash reds is they don't work, they don't work the same as blues or browns do. Like I talked about in video one, they don't have tail bars. And as you can tell, this bird is split for blue, meaning it is a cock. So with ash red, like I talked about, sometimes they have the little red flecks. Sometimes it will spread on a fleck and give you a darker bird. Now the best, they call these lavenders, the lighter expressions like this. If you really want to make great lavenders, you want them to be barless, because then you just won't get any of the red at all. A barless ash red already looks like it is spread because there is no terror ball and it's just taking away the bars. Now this is an ash red bar spread. This bird here is also an ash red spread. That was also However, this one is not a bar, it's a T pattern. And you can tell it's a whole lot darker than that last one. If you look at the tail, you can tell that it is an ash red still. And this bird also is heterozygous recessive red. We'll be talking about that gene in the next video, video four. But this bird, since it's a T pattern and it has more, you know, T patterns have more pattern on the shield than just the bars down there, it's all coming up on the shield. It spreads, it spreads all of that as well. Since ash red doesn't cover it as well as spread, you still see a lot of the darker parts. Now going back to black, now just because it's spread doesn't mean it's going to be entirely black. As you can tell, the one I showed you had the white flights. This one has the white flights and it also has grizzle on top of it. But if you look at the tail, it's still a spread bird. This bird pretty much the same as that one. 
This is a tippler. It's just a blue grizzle spread. And this bird only, this is just heterozygous grizzle, but we'll talk into that more in another video. This tippler here, just like the last one I just showed you, it's grizzle also. It's also spread. The difference is this bird has two doses of grizzle. They call these pricks. We'll talk about these also in another video. But this is just another example of, of a spread bird. Now I want to show you... This bird is not spread. I grabbed it because it, like this one, is a print. But this is just a blueprint, no spread. You can see, you can still see the tail bar. You catching that good? You can still see the tail bar on it, but other than that, it's the same as this bird. Here is another ash red, kind of jumping around with the colors. This is an ash red bar spread. Now, this also grizzle, but you can see how it's got the red kind of still in here a little bit. And then we got a brown spread. Now, brown acts the same as blue does. It's the only ash red that really throws, throws things off. But this is just a brown spread. I don't know what pattern it is underneath. With browns, you're going to want them to be T patterns. With browns and blacks, you want your spreads to be T patterns because that will keep them darker. With ash reds, you want them to be bar, preferably barless, because that will make them lighter. So you're kind of doing opposite things with both of those. But this is a brown, and just like the other ones, you can have grizzle on top of it. This has a recessive pie gene with it. So that, thanks for watching, that concludes video number three about spread. Next week we are going to talk about recessive red. This week was a dominant, a dominant modifier of spread. Next week is going to be a recessive gene, recessive red, which are not spread, contrary to popular belief. So stay tuned next week for video number four.